Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland everybody. Today we're going to be blowing up stuff with uh, random bits of junk that we found. So in this video we're going to be talking about the tin grenade and the powder charge and going over how good they actually are. These are two, I guess, crafted dangerous devices. I don't really want to say the other thing that they actually are. So I'm going to keep this as vague as possible because I don't want YouTube bots actually grabbing this and thinking that this is like a terrorist video or something. So the tin grenade is a craftable weapon that you can make in New Vegas. This is one of the explosives that you can make thanks to the perk Mad Bomber. So you do need to have the Gunrunner's Arsenal DLC in order to get this perk, and you do need to get up to level 8. Beyond that, you don't really need high requirements to make this, and you don't really need high requirements to make either of these, which is pretty awesome. The Powder Charge can be made also with Mad Bomber, but you can also just find a schematic in order to make it too. So. That's why we're kind of including both these in this list, and the tin grenade is basically the thrown version of this, whereas the powder charge is the mine version of this where you leave it on the ground. The tin grenade requires zero explosives and only two strength to wield, so basically any build is going to be able to use this right away. This does one damage plus 100 damage, the 100 damage is from the actual explosion, the one damage is if you hit somebody directly with your tin can, which I mean you could do with this, but it's really not a whole lot of damage, you're going to be getting your damage from the explosive. This one does 66 damage per second, which is kind of weird, it's kind of hard to tell damage per second with explosives, so uh, this is just what the wiki says. This does a whopping zero crit damage as most explosives kind of do. As a one times crit modifier, it doesn't matter if we can't hit crit damage anyway. This one costs 35 action points to throw, which is, I think, about normal for most of the explosives. I think this is the same as like the frag grenades and stuff. Dynamite's a little bit less than this, but it's about the same. You can't really throw a whole lot of explosives in a VATS build, and sometimes that's not even the best thing to do, since sometimes your person will try to chuck this high and you'll hit the ceiling and it'll bounce right down at your feet and you'll blow yourself up. So... Eh, vats build and explosives don't always really go well together and the tin grenades weigh half a weight so they're fairly lightweight and about the same as all the other thrown explosives you can make these at any sort of workbench again so long as you have the perk mad bomber and all this takes is one duct tape 50 pistol powder and one tin can that tin can does need to be a standard tin can it cannot be a bent tin can otherwise this won't work for reasons I don't know why you couldn't just bend the tin can back and then use it for that. I, I don't know. I really wish they wouldn't have put the, like, the bent tin cans in this game because it's just kind of unnecessary for what you can and can't make. They should all just be tin cans, but yeah, whatever. Now, this does only require 25 explosives in order to make two. However, the perk Mad Bomber takes 45 explosives in order to earn anyway, so you're always going to have this available as soon as you grab Mad Bomber, which is pretty nice. You can make a bunch of these really early on because you can just scrap a bunch of pistol powder. Tin cans are super easy to find. Duct tape is also pretty easy to find. A lot of vendors sell it too. So you can make a bunch of these and that's pretty awesome. Let's go over the powder charge first before we talk about pros and cons to these because they are a little bit similar but slightly different and I kind of want to go over the stats of that one. So powder charges are something that the powder gangers make and these are basically the same as the tin grenade just you can place these down as mines. So if anything walks near them, at least that's an enemy, they will set them off and this will explode and deal damage to them. This can be super useful and the powder charges are pretty good early on, especially since you can pick up quite a few of these around powder ganger areas. So you can take them and just use them as improvised mines early on, which is really good because mines and explosives in general do really high limb damage. So you can more easily cripple limbs like legs of enemies uh, or wings of enemies potentially and make some of the scary enemies early on, not as scary. The powder charges require zero explosives and only one strength to wield. That's pretty normal and about the same as the tin grenade. This one also does one damage if you hit something directly with it. However, if you do hit something directly with it, it will go off immediately. And then this does 75 explosive damage on top of that. This one does 76 damage per second. I Again, this damage per second is kind of weird with these because you could stack a whole bunch of these up and have something run across it and do way more damage and damage per second, but... Yeah, whatever, it's what the wiki says. This one also does zero crit damage, like most explosives, has a one times crit modifier, so that doesn't matter. This one also costs 35 action points. You really shouldn't be using powder charges and vats though. Mines and vats just don't go well together, because it's really easy to blow yourself up with them if it's allowing you to use vats in the first place. You usually just want to set these down and then throw your explosives and kind of not worry about vats unless you have certain explosive weapons like a grenade rifle or something that can kind of make better use of it. Or I guess the grenade like APW, that one could also do pretty well. This one also weighs half a weight, so these aren't super heavy to carry around. And these ones can also be crafted on the workbench slightly differently than the tin grenades. These ones also require a tin can, one sensor module, two sticks of dynamite, and one duct tape. So they're not 
very difficult to make whatsoever. You can make them very early on. They also only require 10 explosives to make, so basically anybody with any sort of skill setup, any sort of special placement, should be able to make these, with maybe some exception, but you can probably buff up your perception enough to make these right away if that's not an issue. And the uh, dynamite cost can actually go down by one if you have the hand loader perk too, weirdly enough, for these. I don't know why that one works. You can actually make these, though, outside of just having the Mad Bomber perk, because you can go and find the schematic to make these if you go to the Powder Ganger's uh, prison. It's located in there. For the general pros of these weapons, they do pretty high damage, and they have AoE damage, which is really good for fighting multiple enemies, just like all the explosives. These are very cheap and easy to make, so that can be really, really useful, especially for an explosives build early on because explosives probably struggle the most in the early game since you don't really have a great way of blowing things up early on besides throwing dynamite which can be a little bit janky these ones are generally better because they're less janky and it is an early game explosive so that definitely helps for the general cons of this though it does require a perk at least for the tin grenades so you're gonna have to go with mad bomber however if you're gonna go with an explosives build or an explosives build mixed with something else you are probably gonna take that perk anyway so it's not such a huge con and these do fall off compared to other explosives. There's no real reason to be using tin grenades or powder charges once you can get access to things like frag grenades and frag mines, at least in a decent quantity, because they are just straight upgrades from this. So they will taper off towards about the mid game to the late game for an explosives build, but they're still kind of nice that you can at least make them. That also makes them kind of good to be made in places like dead money too, since you can make tin grenades in dead money at at the very least. Powder charges, I don't think you can because I don't think there's any dynamite that you can find there. We should also probably talk about all the perks that affect these two. Mad Bomber is an obvious one because it allows you to make these. Splash damage can be really nice for these weapons as well because you can blow up a bigger area, although that is also dangerous towards yourself. Hit the deck is also really nice because that makes it so you take less explosive damage. That also counts for your explosives, so that's really nice. And then Demo Expert really helps these ones out too because it buffs up their damage overall. If you can take all those in an explosives build, you'll be doing really well. I would put the powder charge and the tin grenade up into the C tier. They're decent enough explosives, especially in the early game, but they do fall off later. Frag mines, frag grenades kind of outcompete these, and once you also have some other explosive weapons like a missile launcher or a grenade rifle, you also don't necessarily need to be relying on these, but they're never going to be a terrible option to take and they can at least do something towards basically every enemy, assuming the enemy can have broken limbs and that affects them in some way. So as long as they're not really like a robot, it should still do something towards them. So should you use the tin grenade and the powder charge? Sure, early on they're actually pretty good. I love picking up powder charges even if I'm not building for an explosives build in my runs because they're readily available at the start and they work really well for crippling limbs against scary enemies. Tell me your thoughts on the tin grenade and the powder charge down in the comments below. How do you enjoy using them? Thank you guys so very much for watching this and tell me what weapon you would like to see next covered in this series. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye everyone.